good morning folks. <laughs> hey. Good morning. You know, normally uh, I'll be quite jovial today with all those signs of spring. We've got baby chicks emerging. I think that was a queen bumblebee as well that we put on a flower just a moment ago. The dogs, the bantam hens are laying eggs. All really uh, quite exciting. I've got seeds growing at home as well. We've got cucumbers and tomatoes. They're all sprouting out the ground, so there's lots going on, lots to be happy about, and uh, lots to look forward to, you know? It's quite surreal coming in here today with everything being turned off. It's very odd. Look at that lot. All just sat in suspended animation suspenders animation so there are a few things that we can possibly do over the coming months there have been lots of suggestions of can you not do can you not do kind of uh, deliveries or takeouts food from the kitchen beer from the pub that kind of stuff well we could but I'd have to do it on my own with the help of maybe Stuart and Jem and that's because in order for our staff to qualify for this 80% uh, wage protection package that the government announced on Friday afternoon, they cannot come to work, frankly. So we won't have any staff, we won't have a chef, we can't cook any food, you know, that kind of stuff. Because if they came in, they'd put at risk their wage uh, package and then we would actually have to pay them. And are we gonna make enough money to pay all the staff uh, just by doing online sales and what have you and to take aways. No, we're not, frankly. We're definitely gonna be, a, it's gonna be a drop in the ocean in comparison. So any of these sales that we do, they are going to have to be just done by me. Quite frankly, I'm not really in the mood for putting beer in mini kegs in, you know. I just feel like I'm gonna just take these first few days, gather my thoughts and uh, just enjoy, try and enjoy life a little bit without letting all of this negativity, which I think a lot of it is media driven, without letting it get you down. Whilst, of course, we're still taking the threat seriously, don't get me wrong, but uh, yeah, there's more to life than money, isn't there, at the end of the day. So as long as we can pay our rent and keep a roof over our head and, uh, you know, pay rent at home as well as at work and the staff are taken care of, We'll get through it, I know we will. So yeah, that's why I'm that's why I'm not really gonna go in for a massive push on online sales because I don't think it's worth the staff risking risking their financial support package. There are plenty of other jobs though I can be doing. For instance, here we have some painted plywood for a desk that I'm making Abigail at the moment for her bedroom. So she's picked this lovely duck egg blue colour. And I've got the CAD drawer in here with the cutting list. And well, we started this before the corona closed down, but it's definitely a project I can finish now. And I've got another one over here. This is a desk. For Dominic, this is what he wants. It's going to change a little bit from that design. These two cupboards here are going to go to one side and that because there's a wall there. So the TV is going to be on the side. This will just come across on its own. But yeah, there's another one. Cutting list and all that jazz. But I've got to move that stuff and then reprint it. So that's no good. And then we've also got all this timber out here in the back. I don't know if you can see through the window there. All that tile lat or slate lat. And we're going to be making a chicken pen for the new hatchlings with that. Some point in the near future. So I hope I can still get supplies from Tool Station and Screwfix in order to carry out these few jobs. So I'm going to pop you down and to get out the roller, pop a second coat of paint on all of this furniture and then maybe have a walk into town and get some more paint if I can find any. Fingers crossed that I can. I'll see you in a tick. 
So I've done a little bit of painting and then we've come up into the kitchen just to check on all the frozen stock and to add insult to injury we've been having trouble with this freezer so when we bought it we had a month's warranty with it but we had to wait for the gas engineers to install the gas so we didn't turn any of the kitchen equipment on because it obviously had no stock in it because when we got a month's guarantee on them they're out of guarantee we've spoke to the guys that we bought them off they think it's a glitch with the PCB the PCBs are 160 quid and uh, I bought one it didn't work but it looked like it was flashed for the fridge version of this particular unit, not the freezer version. So instead, <laughs> I've gone in with a bodge wire. So this is the live outlet for the defrost element, which sits behind at the bottom of the evaporator. And this relay is not getting power to the 12 volt contacts. Uh, the coil, 12 volt coil, so it's not closing the contacts. I imagine there's something wrong on one of these chips. Don't know what it is, but because it's not doing its job properly, I've decided to bypass that, and we put a little cheat wire in with a plug on the end, and then on that plug, I'm gonna stick a timer, and I'm gonna set this to come on twice a day for half an hour. Hopefully that will do the job of thawing out the element, so it's like an auto defrost cycle. The element's 500 watts, I've tested it with a multimeter, and uh, this will handle a resistive load up to 3200 watts, so it should do the job. I'm going to finish the wiring up, this is the heating element here that needs to be plugged into it so we'll finish wiring it up and uh, we'll plug it in and take the top off and have a look if it's actually working so if I climb up the ladder here you'll see that this is the problem and because this is frozen up the air can't get through so what we need to do is just see if the uh, cooling element is actually working so I'm going to pop this thermometer down there hopefully that's close enough that's reading that's dropping pretty quickly now might be able to see it better on the camera than I can yeah just about minus 15 minus 17 as you can see so we've got a read in there or 15 or 17 not minus and this is the solution so if we just bypass the timer on here we turn that on see the little red indicator light is on there and that should now be powering the element down here and the trouble is the um, the compressor is going to cycle on and off while it's going through the defrost stage which is a shame there we go we can see that's heating up there and just about make that out 14 15 yeah we can make that out 16.5 yeah 17 so the heater is heating up even though the compressor is still on there's not an ideal situation for a automatic defrost but at least we're gonna have a defrost so I'm gonna let this run for half an hour and we'll come back and we'll see if it's actually taken this ice away and if it has then I'll let it continue to do its thing and it's like a it's a quick fix that should should be good enough it's as good as I can do so I'll pull this lid back on this is the access hatch of course to the evaporator coil there we go freezer sealed back up 
The internal temperature at the minute is minus 19, but the trouble is, down here at the bottom, we're only at 10 degrees, 15 degrees, so we need to have this down here totally freezing, otherwise stuff's going to be going off. So let's come back in half an hour and see how this, this has actually worked. I'm pretty sure it will. Right, we're back from town, picked up some paint. The freezer's still at minus 17, which should be fine. Have we got Thor? A Thor on? Mm, not a lot. That's a little bit, oh shit. It's a little bit worrying then, isn't it? That obviously doesn't work. Well, it feels softer though. Maybe it's going to need longer than um, 15 minutes. Right, I've decided to take a new tack on how we're going to approach this. So I've drawn a little schematic out here. It's not the best diagram in the world, but I hope you'll be able to understand what I'm going to do is put a double throw, double pole relay in line to the power for the freezer so that the freezer will turn off when the heater turns on. So the timer will provide power for the, uh, for the live side of the relay coil and uh, we're going to have line in as well on common there. That's going to come round to line in. So common's got live on it, and the timer's got live and neutral, obviously. And then on the line out for the timer, when it clicks across, 15 to 30 minutes, twice a day, this common coil will, uh, sorry, the coil will be energized coil will be energized meaning that the contacts close so the normally open relay will close I've got these the wrong way around I know I have if you actually look on a relay but it doesn't matter for the purposes of this little diagram so when that's uh, flicked on that means the freezer will actually turn off and the heater will turn on and then when the timer cuts out again uh, it will de-energize the coil on the relay, meaning that the normally closed contacts are closed again, and the freezer comes back to life. So that's the plan. It should work. There's no reason why it shouldn't, and uh, it's a simple way of making sure that we don't have the compressor running at the same time as the heating element. Otherwise, it's kind of in a battle against each other which is pointless really. So let's go and see if we can find the components for this and put it together. So fingers crossed this will solve our problem folks. As you can see if I flick this switch there we go a little sparky sparky. Yeah it's looking like it's uh, going to do the job for us. So I just need to tidy away well, the cables, push the freezer back, and then monitor it a little bit longer. Solved it. So there we have it, folks. That's melting as we speak. So that problem is solved. Hopefully the freezer will get down to temp really quickly. And uh, just one little issue over here. I didn't have a suitable container to put the uh, <laughs> relay and it's Sunday. I'm not going to go out and get one now. And of course there are live contacts on the end. So I just thought I'd drop it into a pot noodle tub. <laughs> It'll be fine. It's behind the front. Look, nobody can access it. And uh, well, nobody's going to be at work anyway, are they? Let's face it, for the next few months. So as long as this works, then uh, problemo solved I think folks and we can get on with some other jobs I've done a bit of painting you know it's not getting too late today but quite frankly I'm getting kind of 
fed up already. I think I might just go home. There you go, look, you see me on the camera there. I'm just here. Hello. You can see outside. Nobody in. Nobody in, folks. Yeah, so how weird does this all look? Very, very surreal indeed. I closed every line down. There's still lots of spirits on the shelves, but you know, they'll keep. <laughs> I just can't get over it. It's bloody balmy. It's bleeding balmy, I tell you that. Anyway, I've done enough jobs for today, I think. I'm gonna go get in the car and bugger off home. Keep your pecker up, folks. Yeah, might do a vlog tomorrow if we're lucky. I hope to do a vlog tomorrow. I feel like doing a vlog tomorrow. You know what, I might even make some hot processed soap if I don't come to work. If I do come to work, then I'll come to work. So I'll leave you with a parting shot of the Chesterfield Canal where for the ducks and fishes, life still goes on.